Welcome to Instant Deck Techs. The aim of the series is to give you a short, concise guide on how to build a certain deck. It won't cover every card, but we'll go through all the categories and go over all the types of cards needed to make the deck work. Any card mentioned will be listed down in the description below. The commanders for this deck are Tana the Blood Sower and Nadir, Agent of Duskenel. Tana is 2 red green for legendary creature Elf Druid. It is a 2-2. It has Trample, and whenever Tana the Blood Sower deals combat damage to a player, create that many 1-1 green sapling creature tokens. It also has Partner. Nadir is 5 and a black for a 3-3 legendary creature elf warrior. Whenever a token you control leaves the battlefield, put a plus 1 counter on Nadir. When Nadir leaves the battlefield, create a number of 1-1 green elf warrior creature tokens equal to its power. It also has partner. The aim of this deck is to use tribal synergies to buff our commanders, so that they can generate more tokens, which will swing through to kill our opponents. Although Tana doesn't make elf tokens herself, Nadir doesn't care about this. The heart of any elf deck is the mana dorks which lead to explosive starts. You will want to run as many of these as possible, the more low drop mana dorks you run, the less lands you will need to run, but we'll go over that in a bit more detail later. We can run mana generators that are not one mana. We just need to make sure they have a powerful effect. Elves are one of the most supported tribes in Magic. As such, there are a large number of lords that buff our creatures. There are some buff effects that are not elves, and these are good as they will generally survive a board wipe. These buffs are all important, as our commanders care about having a high power. As such, I would recommend running at least 8. Our card draw is tied to the creatures that we will be playing. We want to look for spells that draw us cards when we have creatures come into play, and when we have a large board state, as this is generally what works best in our colours, so I would recommend running at least 8. Although our commanders both make tokens, we also want to run more token makers that will synergise great with our lords and our other token matters cards. All but Freyly should be budget options. I'd recommend running between 0 and 6 of these cards, depending on your budget and the makeup of the rest of your deck. By adding black and red to the standard elf list, there are some great cards that become accessible to us. These can be added to other sections as you wish. As both of our commanders care about their power, we're going to play a number of cards that help buff them up. Berserk here is especially good. Null Root Trapper isn't a buff, but will allow us to get more damage through with Tana. By giving it Death Touch, we only have to assign one damage to each blocker and then the rest will trample over. There are plenty of other buffs in these colours, so you can tune your deck to your playstyle. If you like big swinging creatures, run more. If you like tribal synergy, run less. There is a number of good removal spells that work well in an elf deck. I would look at these examples here, and then you can also add the best board wipes and interaction that Black and Red give us access to. In total, you want between 6 and 8 ways of interacting with your opponents. One of the biggest issues with a tribal deck is what happens after a board wipe, as it can be very hard to rebuild. Adding black to the elf deck gives us extra redundancy that we normally wouldn't have access to. Nadir already gives us a board state in case of everything being wiped, and although Izoni doesn't make elves herself, the ability to create an instant board state will be really powerful on an otherwise empty board. Call of the Claw is much more situational, but can be devastating at the right time. I would also consider Vicious Shadows, as this can deal an immense amount of damage to our opponents when there is a board wipe, so we'll make them think twice about doing so. I would personally run at least two of these effects here. Adding red to the deck gives us access to some great ways of dealing damage to our opponents. Some do this when they come into play, like Perforos or Impact Tremors. Throne of the God Pharaoh works great with all of our mana dogs, as it turns them into damage. There are other good Token Matters cards. These are all decent in the deck, but are not necessary if you don't have them, as they are not budget friendly options. There are some other great win conditions that we can run. Azuri used to be the de facto leader of all elf ball decks, and will serve as a one-man win condition in this deck. Shaman of the Pack can kill an opponent out of nowhere, and there is also the rest of the Crater Hoof and Overrun effects that are out there. Run the best ones that you have available to you. I'd recommend between 2-4 to four cards dedicated for this purpose. As we are in 3 colours, I wouldn't run too many lands that don't tap for a colour of mana. Look for lands that buff our creatures to get extra damage through. Lands that synergise with elves are also very good here. You want to run the best jewel and tri lands you have available to you. Most of our elves are based in green, so when picking jewels, the ones that tap for green mana will have a higher priority. When building the deck, try to limit the amount of double pips in red and black spells, as this will make the deck easier to curve out in. In a deck like this, as most of the CMC of your spells are going to be very low, you can go as low as 32 or even 30 lands. But test it out and find a level that you're comfortable with. Thank you very much for watching. Like, share, subscribe, and let us know down below if there's any decks you would like to see a deck tech on.